abanyarwanda baba muri leta ya California ya majyaruguru muri leta zunze ubumwe za Amerika kuwa gatandatu tariki 15 mata 2023 bahuriye mu gikorwa cyo kwibuka ku nshuro ya 2029 genocide yakorwa abatutsi mu gihe cyo magana 994 mu bitabiye iki gikorwa harimo abanyarwanda batuye muri leta ya California abayobozi batandukanye muri ambasade y'u Rwanda muri leta zunze ubumwe za Amerika ndetse n'inshuti z'u Rwanda Dr. Fodidas ndamye umugabe yatanze ubuhamya bw'inzira y'umusaraba yanyuzemo muri genocide yakorwa abatutsi ndetse nuko umuryango we wose wishwe ashima ingabo za RPF zahagaritse genocide yakorwa abatutsi zikarokora bahigwaka and then you have the militia men on one side you have the army fighting them they did a job that no one should ever forget and so anyway now the genocide had ended I'm ending now the genocide had ended but the worst was actually ahead I have survived but I don't have any relative we were eight children and six of them had been killed there was only, by the way, my nephews, I was the last born. Everybody's killed. And I came to learn that right after the bush life, somebody told me no one is alive. And so I was like, now what is life like? What is the point? Why should I even live after all? I don't have a home. I don't have a village I can call my village. And finally, you know, what happened is that, you know, uh, to make the situation worse, as a Christian, I told you, I was praying. And before that, I had prayed for a job. I said, Lord, if you give me a job, I will take my salary, buy some Bibles, go to my home village, preach the gospel. Now, I got a job right after the genocide. And my village, everybody had been killed. There is no one, right? And so how what do you do that? So... A voice was speaking to me, say, you said when you get a job, you go to your village, you will preach. And I'm like, no, that's not God speaking to me. I can't go to a village which killed my family. Anyway, of course, the government of Rwanda was still working hard on unity and reconciliation. And, but yet, it was still a long way to go. Now the situation is much better, amen, because the government has, you know, they have managed to unite the people. If you are outside, you may not know, but if you go to Rwanda, you will witness what I'm talking about. And I believe uh, Honorable, the ambassador can, can witness to that because she goes there more often than any one of us. Uh, but it was far from being reached at that time. It was 1994. And guess what? Because I believed in God, I said, no, I got to do something despite myself. I have to go to my village. I went to my village and people were not very friendly because even though I talked to the religious leader there who called the people to come, only women came and some children and men were not willing to come because they thought I'm there for revenge. And slow by slow, day after day, many people were coming until I found myself in a th on a hill of thousands of, of people, some of whom were actually militiamen, including the guy who killed my own sister. And anyway, I'm done. But let me share with you as I leave, maybe just a lesson I learned. One, I learned that this this world is not our home. We are strangers. How do you lose a million people, our beloved ones, and they die just within a hundred days? We are sojourners. And we ourselves, of course, will die. Of course, we won't die with it by genocide. And I want to thank Rwanda, the leadership in Rwanda. I want to thank this country as well that has hosted us. But whether we are in America or in Rwanda, we should know that this is not our home. And so we should probably be looking for a better world, which is actually a heaven to come. Number two, when you have a government that is not killing people, you should be thankful. When you are in Rwanda today, as we know it, or in this country like the United States, that actually most of us came from outside, right? And you see how peaceful it is. There is somebody else who is walking in the background, right? You should be thankful to God. And of course, last, we should probably love one another. And love everyone. 
because I believe I survived and maybe you survived too. And if you didn't have, I would say, a chance to go through the genocide we went through, you are alive so that, and you have a happy life so that you can make someone else happy. In my biography, they read about the founding thing I did for Goshen Finance. Right now, it has 52,000 clients. 52,000. I started with just $200 just $200 and I started a microfinance. Now, 52,000, imagine. And my next dream is that there are so many genocide survivors with no jobs. The government has done a lot. They have helped so many, they have sponsored them. But some of them don't get jobs. And I would like being in North America, I don't know how to go about it. If you know somebody who can help, maybe an organization, please reach out to me and I will be so happy. And like I told you, I've dedicated this book towards that, Preaching from the Grave. It is an interesting story. And whatever comes out of it, if you have a way to market it as well, whatever comes out, it is going to help those people. And I want to thank you so much for the opportunity. Again, may God bless you all. And uh, may, be, may we be the most loving people because there are people out there who are not loving. May we show the difference. Thank you. Christine Davidian, umge mwa yawazi akawa. Umge mwa shinze kaminuza ya Sonoma State University. Ni jambo ya jesheje kubara ha. Ya vuze kuje nusidi ya kura watuzi. Kuwa yibu kwa meza tatuyo se. Kwa ringo umga kujira ngo ibijawa yibi tazo njira kuwa umuru gwanda. I've been trying to remember how many years it's been. Um, but a very long time I've been coming to your commemorations and always honored uh, to be here amongst all of you and thank everybody for, um, for inviting me. I wanted to tell you, I'm actually really pleased that this commemoration is really close to April 7th, the start of the genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda. I think it's important to sort of recognize the onset of genocide in that particular day very much like the Armenians do, which is every April 24th. And why that I think is important is because I think it brings everybody together. The Armenians around the world commemorate that day. They know that that's a day we all come together as a community to remember. Dr. Boatamo Masupoy, Nijamburje, Yavuze Kobriji, you have a equivocation, Sidia Kurava Tutsi, Atumirgua, Kandi Kukui Inshuro, Nugua Ragua, Yarikobia, and Gonga Ko, Yita Vira Kifatanabandi, the Savuga Koki, Vocation, Sidia Kurava Tutsi, Arugui, Chua Hirinza Karinga, and Zai Guemo, Ariko, Yitsa Kukua Kandi Navakomo, Kakuazi, and Sidia Kurava Tutsi, the Tsenabaro Kutse, Haki Kuziri, and Wangaru Kazimi Hungavana, Bate, Winibiava, Kubabia Ibavo. Every time there is a commemoration, I'm invited. And every time I make it a point that I come. This time it was particularly difficult because of my health reasons, but I had to come. So thank you for inviting me. I ask myself, why do I always come? You have just talked about never again. If I didn't come, then it means never again to me is just a convenient utterance. So even in times of inconvenience, if I really believe that what happened in Rwanda should not happen again, I should make an effort and come and be with everybody to commemorate what happened in Rwanda in 1994. Yes, we are here to raise our voices honor those who were killed, honor the victims and the survivors. And I also want to remind you that 
the next generation, we should remember generation trauma. The children of the survivors are also affected by what happened to the people who were killed, what their parents have uh, experienced. So it's important to remember that. I'm not going to say a lot. I just want to say that let us not make never again a slogan. Let us make never again something that we live and breathe even when it is inconvenient. Um, like you, Christine, I'm just so proud of Rwanda and Rwandese, how they keep the memories alive. And I know it's not easy because there are denials. It's like we are victimizing the victims again. And all what I can do as an individual is to make sure that I do not, I do not contribute to that. So thank you and um, continue, continue with the remembering, the uniting, and the renewing. Thank you. Bwana Abdul bigira umwami umuyobozi w'umuryango w'abanyarwanda batuye muri California ya majyepfo muri leta zunze ubumwe za Amerika we yavuze ko kwibuka uyu mwaka ku nshuro ya 2029 genocide yakorwa abatutsi ari gihe cyo kuzirikana ibihe bibi igihugu cyabayemo ndetse no gutekereza ku buryo bitazongera kubaho kundi narimwe This mark this year marks the 29th uh, commemoration of genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda it's time for remembrance reflection and commitment to ensure that such atrocities will never happen again. We remember more than one million people, the Tutsi, who were brutally murdered during the genocide against the Tutsi in 1994. We also remember the courage and resilience of survivors, some of them are here, who, con who really continue to heal and lead their lives uh, in, in our communities. As we commemorate this day, it's important to recognize the devastation which uh, happened during that time in our communities and make sure it will never happen again. Let us know and let's also let's honor the memory of those who lost their lives during the genocide and continue to work towards a more just and inclusive world. Thank you. Bwana Yehuya Dambangukira, umuyobozi w'umuryango w'abanyarwanda batuye muri leta zunze ubumwe za Amerika, yashimiye ambasaderi Mathilde Mukanabana kuba yaje kwifatanya n'abo banyarwanda kwibuka ku nshuro ya 2029 genocide yakora abatutsi ndetse no kuba akomeza gushyigikira abanyarwanda batuye muri leta zunze ubumwe za Amerika mu bikorwa bitandukanye bakora. Many of you that have known her have either been to her house more than once, more than twice. She's one of the most hospitable individuals you'll ever find. And she deservedly is in the position where she can influence and indeed help as many of us, not only as Rwandans, but as members of this community. And she has lived in this town, this part of this town for many years. And one of the things that uh, endears her to me for the years I've known her and that many of you can attest to is she is an advocate for just about anybody, children, parents, and most of you who know her, you can actually call her friend because she is actually that accessible and that friendly to many of us. She just so happens in her friendly, loving way to be the ambassador to the United States and uh, a non-resident ambassador to Mexico, Brazil, and Argentina. 
She was an educator for a long time before she became Her Excellency. And she lived in this town where uh, I understand uh, social media is a light, is a buzz, is a blaze that she was given an honorary degree, doctorate degree in humane letters. Now that is an accomplishment. <laughs> Honorable Ambassador, welcome, we welcome you home. She is one of those unflappable people. She is, uh, for lack of a better expression, tough like iron, but she is the most gentle person you can ever encounter. And I am privileged, Madam Ambassador, to work with you, to know you for the years. I can tell stories after that many years, because one of the times I most remember is I was sleeping in her living room on a mat or a bank. I don't know what it was. I have no idea why I was there. It is so long ago. But that is the kind of friend that you have been to many, many of us. Ambassador of Rwanda, the United States of America, Professor Matilde Mukandamana, we mu butumwa yagejeje kubaraha yavuze ko kwibuka genocide yakora abatutsi mu gihe cy'umwe gara 1994 rugo ha gaciro n'icyubahiro abishwe no gufata mu mugonga bayirokotse yashimangiye ko inshingano yo gukumira genocide ari ya buri wese mu butumwa bwe kandi yagaragaje ko nubwo genocide yakora abatutsi yahagaritswe hakigaragara ikibazo cy'ingenga bitekerezo yayo ibahanini bigakorwa n'abayigize mu ruhare n'abambari babo asaba baraha ko byamagana mu buryo bwose bushoboka it was so easy at the end of genocide to go through revenge, revenge killing. It was very easy. If we were, we all knew who had killed our parents. You know, or we knew people. So if we were in a position or capacity to get revenge, you could have done it. But that light I'm talking about, that was lit in our country, that was thinking in terms of saying, this is one nation and we all live together. We just have to find a way to come together as people, chaff and grain, and try to mold the nation that we'll be happy about. That's how reconciliation came. All the homegrown solutions that the country has embarked on for the last 29 years, it was to try to bring the people together. But more importantly, to guarantee that any child, any child in Rwanda who was born whether it was from the killers, is not going to carry the shame of the, the, the parents. Is to say this is a new Rwanda, we are all coming together, we have to find ways to, to mourn together, to, to be together, and to face what happened together. So naming genocide against the Tutsi, there were people who were saying, why are you naming Naming is a part of our history, and I think all generations have to face how it was possible that one group of people would accept to kill the other group because of who they were. So that, the historical accuracy is important for all of us, wherever group you are coming from, because that can help you never to do it again, because you know the signs, you know how it's coming. Uh, I think you've seen the video, the short video they were showing that even though we are talking about 1994, but it was building up since 1959, 1963, 19, you know, I left my country in 1973. That was way before we were even uh, conceived. But 1973, we were still being kicked out of our country. Most of us left our country. So it went many, many years, but there was that culture of impunity because it was about the Tutsi group. So we have created a country that is better. When we look back, unless the new generation fails the country, it will never happen again. This is a place when we talk the never again. At least we have a guarantee in our country it won't happen. Unless the new generation comes and go backwards. Because we are together as a nation, people have come together, it's not perfect, it's a journey that we have to continue. But at the same time, we have to understand that we, we've left that behind because of our leadership. That's the line we've given ourselves as a nation. And all the young people, if you look, uh, when we send to Munyarwanda, 
Dumunyarwanda was a phenomenon that most people were always fighting against. But in Dumunyarwanda determined you as a full Rwandan, whether you used to be Hutu, you are Tutsi, it doesn't matter how you see yourself, but under the rule and the law of, United, of Rwanda, all people are Rwandans. And this is what can guarantee that no one who has an identity card, you know, you were lucky that ya, that young man gave you the, the identity card, but you could be killed. I remember when we were leaving our country, uh, 1973, and I'm going to, to, to leave quickly. It was one of the most stupid thing of youth, because I remember I tore, tore down my identity. When we got to Burundi, that was the first thing to do, we, we, we kind of, but now sometimes I wish to have it for historical records. But I'm the one who, you know, we were just there and we said, let's throw this stuff in the Kanyaru. Kanyaru is the, the river between uh, Rwanda and Burundi. We said, this is the end. We thought it was the end of it, everything. You know, you were talking about being a refugee. That's what, you never think you'll ever come back. You never. So it took a long time for us to understand that maybe we'll be back in the country, we can show those evidence like the older generation we are and to say, look at what used to be. Because sometimes for young people, maybe you might think about what we say and it's like a fiction. Because, or, or no, this is real. This is real. And you know what? Genocide is not something that really kills the people dying. It kills our humanity. We all die. You know, it destroys people. Ibikorwa byo kwibuka genocide yakorwa abatutsi ku njura 29 birakomeje hirya no hino ku banyarwanda batuye mu ntara gatandatu muri leta zunze ubumwe za Amerika muri iki gihe kiminsi jana Simeon Stizom humuza One Nation Radio ijwi rya diaspora muri Amerika